Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones off the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed, dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set, up a, set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called this place Bethel. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is 139, verses 1 to 11 and 23 to 24. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know when I sit or when I stand. You comprehend my thoughts long before. You discern my path and the places where I rest. You are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue but you, Lord. Know it all together. You have encompassed me behind and before, and have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot endure it. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there also. If I spread out my wings toward the morning, or dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will co cover me, and the night will enclose me. The darkness is no darkness with you, but the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Put me to the proof and know my thoughts. Look well, lest there be any way of wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. New Testament reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that about to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own but will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among them, among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in the gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reaper, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into a house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will, th and will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, I don't know about you, but I love that psalm that we heard uh, this morning. It's so beautiful. And it's such a great reminder of the all-encompassing presence of God. You know, it reminds us, uh, in the way that the psalmist can do so well, this beautiful poetry uh, uh, and, and song style, it reminds us that no matter where we go, God is there. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down into my grave, you are there. So think of the implications of that. It means nowhere, nowhere is God forsaken. Everywhere is soaked in God. So there'll be times in our lives where that gives us great joy. It gives me joy most of the time, I think. You know, I heard it this morning. It's so joyous to be reminded that God is everywhere. We are soaked in God like sponges in the ocean, right? We can, we can be filled with God, but we can never contain God. Right? We can't box God in. So that gives us so much joy. But I guess there are probably other times in our lives, too, where that might give us a bit of anxiety. You know? There may be times where we're worried, actually, that, that we're not living in a way that we think is, is acceptable to God. And then the idea of being soaked in God becomes uh, almost oppressive to us. I've had that expressed to me uh, over the last few years. But the message is, God is everywhere. And if we couple that with the mercy, with the love, the forgiveness, and the grace of Jesus, then the anxiety melts away and we're left with joy. So I wanted to start with that this morning. I wanted to start with something joyous. Uh, and uh, before, that I, before I reflect short and quickly on the Gospel reading. So that moves us to the Gospel that I wanted to, to touch on today. And again, we get another wonderful parable from Jesus. Another great reminder of the wisdom uh, of Christ when he dwells among us here on earth. And this is another parable where we get, we get that great pleasure of him actually explaining it to us, which is great. Um, and that's still, even though that clarity has been placed around it by Christ to his disciples and his time at that point, there's still so many different ways that that has been interpreted uh, throughout the years. One way which makes me laugh a little bit was when I was uh, going to a friend's church in my early teens. We went uh, to uh, one of these youth nights, and they had a few people dressed up as reapers. You know, they'd like think of think of Halloween, uh, you know, the Grim Reaper, and they were kind of walking around, and then there was this little drama thing going on. So, hang on. So I've I've been away from Christianity for a couple of years at this point. I come back and now there's Grim Reapers walk around, what's that about? And then they referenced this morning's gospel, you know, about the Reapers, you know, the one, the one will come and reap. Uh, of course, Jesus explains that it's, it's the angels, the angelos, or the messengers of God uh, who will be doing that with a symbolic harvest, with this great apocalyptic language. Not anything like the Grim Reaper, but it does remind us that these symbols... Uh, these, these great uh, imagery that Jesus gives us tends to, over time, get intermingled with many different things and we come out with lots of different interpretations. But one of the central messages, I think, to this Gospel this morning, and I'm sure you've heard many uh, different sermons or uh, on the nature of what happens when we pass from this life about about an idea of heaven or hell, there's millions of different ideas of that, uh, and how this could be a literal you know, uh, 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 illustration of that. Uh, and I won't stand up here and pretend to know exactly what happens when we pass from this life, because we simply don't know, and Jesus didn't speak that much about it. Uh, he did speak a lot about mercy and love and forgiveness, 
And he spoke about justice, which we get today. This idea that uh, uh, the evil doesn't win out in the end. It doesn't. It is God and love, which, by the way, is everywhere, uh, that wins out in the end. You know, these, these very important messages of justice uh, that, that are spoken through this. But it reminds me of morality and how that's changed and will continue to change throughout the ages. If you notice in today's reading, uh, the disciples, you know, uh, all the imagery in, in Jesus' parable. Well, how did the, how did the weeds grow up? It's this great wheat. Did you, did you plant good seed in the fields? Well, yes, I did. But the adversary has come, the evil one, uh, and, and planted weeds that they've grown up against uh, amongst the good seed. Well then, why don't we just go and pull it all up? It's not your job, because you pull up the good with the evil. Have some faith in God. This will be taken care of. Everything is sold to God. So there's a little bit of a message for us today, I think. Throughout the ages, there have been things that have been seen as good and right and normal and correct and have been uh, supported by the state uh, and have been legal. And then we've brought scripture in to support those things as well because we think it's morally correct. But now we look back at history and we realise Goodness me, that was an abuse of scripture. Because we understand that it was not morally correct. In fact, it was repugnant in many ways. There are a couple of very easy illustrations of this that are used frequently. Uh, things like slavery that was supported by scripture. Uh, some of uh, the epistles were used to say this is right, misused to say this is right, of course. Uh, scripture is used to keep quiet sometimes when it comes to oppression, uh, oppressive regimes or uh, uh, when something is legal but wrong. Uh, and we think about sides of the church, uh, many sides of the church, not all of the church, uh, uh, when things happened in Germany, the way they did. Uh, we think of uh, separation and apartheid, those kind of regimes that have been then used by some uh, Scripture has been used by some to support those. And we look back and realize, not always that good at choosing what is right or what is wrong. And we must remind ourselves that the Bible isn't a moral handbook. It isn't. It is the thing that points us to God. It helps us to grow in relationship with God. More important, and just as importantly, with each other. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Justice, peace, good. Have the last say. We're reminded by Christ in today's reading of the Gospel. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, but Clay, it sounds like you're saying anything goes then. If, if we're, not meant to, we're not meant to say what's you know, right or wrong, or we're not great with, with moral judgments, well then doesn't that, isn't that just relativism? Doesn't that mean anything goes? Not at all. Of course not. There, there are clearly things that are wrong. When we're using our power over others, or we are actively choosing to try and oppress someone else to raise ourselves up, that's clearly wrong. We have these examples by Jesus, the way he used his ministry. Now that's not, that's not talking about moral laws here. In fact, Jesus was very clear uh, that the moral laws of the time were quite skewed. I mean, we he wasn't there to set up more laws. Mercy, peace, forgiveness, these are the things we follow as Christian people. Of course not everything goes. Of course not. We have to make these decisions throughout our lives. Every day of our lives, we have to decide what is good and what is not right. However, scriptures like this morning should remind us 
that we should always be open to correction. We should always be open to uh, these moral ideas that we've solidified in our heads at times, potentially being skewed because of the way that we specifically view things. We should be open to the idea that maybe we're not actually always right. And that we don't always have everything together. Right and wrong are very important. This morning's gospel reminds us of that also. Doing things that are peaceful, life-giving, incredibly important. Making sure we stay away from things which are oppressive, belittling, untruthful, dishonest, pretending to be one thing, but actually underneath being another. The idea of bad faith, right? But we're not always going to get it right. And we should remember that we are not the arbiters of morality. So friends, what I would like to take us to, uh, for us to take away from uh, this morning's readings is that we're, we, we're going to get things wrong occasionally. Our morals are not perfect, are not solid, and will change. We should always err on the side of compassion, err on the side of love, err on the side of mercy. Throughout the Bible, our scriptures, there are different ideas of what is right and wrong, and they change. If we choose to use a certain part of scripture to dictate the way we treat others, well then we have to be very clear and justify and back up why we chose to use that specific part of scripture to treat others in that way. Because there are many other examples of scripture that we could use. Always are on the side of compassion, love, mercy. And the second thing is that everything is soaked in God. Everything. Incredible. Not everything is God, not everything is divine, of course. Everything is soaked in God. Sometimes we catch a glimpse of that. We might just be walking down the street and all of a sudden everything's so alive to us. Everything's a miracle, everything's beautiful. We might just stop and, and stare at a bird or a tree and we just realize how much of a gift life is. And at other times that may seem out of our reach. But the best we can do is just cling on to that hope that God is with us, even in the silence. So friends, let's have joy, let's have faith, let's remember that God is with us, and let's treat each other with love, forgiveness, mercy, and all those good things. In the name of God. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer.